Have you ever wondered how the idea of the Panama Canal was conceived? It's a tale that stretches back to the 16th century, to the reign of King Charles V of Spain. The year was 1524, and the world was in the grip of an age of exploration. As Spanish ships navigated the globe, a thought occurred to Charles. Wouldn't it be simpler if there was a direct route through the Isthmus of Panama? The idea was revolutionary but the technology of the time was not up to such an ambitious project. So the concept lay dormant, simmering on the back burner of history until the 19th century. That's when the world, once again, turned its attention to Panama. The Industrial Revolution had brought new technologies and capabilities. The time was ripe for a canal, a man-made waterway to bridge the gap between the Atlantic and the Pacific. In 1881, France, under the leadership of Ferdinand de Lesseps, who had successfully built the Suez Canal, took up the mantle. The vision was clear, a canal that would forever change the course of global trade, a canal that would shrink the world. Imagine the possibilities, ships no longer having to make the long and dangerous trip around Cape Horn at the southern tip of South America, goods and people smoothly sailing from New York to San Francisco, all thanks to this man-made marvel. And it wasn't just about trade. The strategic importance of such a canal was undeniable. It would give whichever country controlled it a significant advantage on the world stage, an advantage in times of both peace and war. But, like all great ideas, it was easier said than done. The Panamanian jungle was unforgiving, the climate harsh. Disease and death were constant companions of those who dared to dream big. But as we'll soon discover, turning this ambitious vision into reality was no easy task. So, how exactly did they build the Panama Canal? This question often triggers a sense of awe and wonder, and rightly so. The construction of the Panama Canal was indeed an engineering marvel, a testament to human ingenuity and willpower. The canal's most iconic feature, the lock system, is a masterstroke of engineering. These giant water elevators, some of the largest and most complex in the world, were designed to lift ships nearly 85 feet above sea level to the canal's highest point before lowering them back down to the ocean on the other side. This system allowed for the canal's pathway to be much shorter, as it didn't have to follow the natural contours of the land. But the locks were just one part of this grand design. Another major engineering challenge was cutting through the Continental Divide, the range of mountains and hills separating the Atlantic from the Pacific. Engineers and laborers toiled for years, using explosives and heavy machinery to carve a path through this formidable barrier, creating the Culebra Cut a nine-mile-long channel through rock and hill. Then, there was the creation of Gatun Lake, the largest man-made lake in the world at the time. This involved damming the Chagres River, a task that was as daunting as it was crucial. The lake not only served as a reservoir for the locks but also as a part of the canal route itself. And let's not forget the challenges, the harsh terrain, the sweltering heat, the torrential rains, and the rampant diseases like malaria and yellow fever. These hardships claimed thousands of lives and made the canal's construction an endeavor of unprecedented scale and risk. But despite all these hurdles, the Panama Canal came to be, thanks to the relentless efforts of those who dreamed, planned, and toiled. Challenges aside, the canal's construction was an engineering feat that forever changed the world of maritime transport. It stands as a testament to what humanity can achieve when we dare to dream big and work hard to make those dreams a reality. What happened when the Americans took over the project? Well, let's delve into that. After the French's unsuccessful attempt to build the Panama Canal, the baton was passed to the United States in 1904. The French faced numerous challenges including rampant diseases and a lack of adequate technology. The Americans however stepped into the scene with a new game plan. The first order of business was to combat diseases such as yellow fever and malaria, which had decimated the French workforce. The U.S. brought in Dr. William Gorgas, a renowned physician who had previously helped eradicate yellow fever in Havana. Dr. Gorgas implemented a series of sanitation measures such as fumigation and the installation of mosquito nets. His efforts significantly reduced the spread of diseases among the workers and the local population. Next, the Americans tackled the technological challenges. They brought in state-of-the-art steam shovels, dredges, and locomotives. These machines were far more advanced than what the French had at their disposal, and they greatly accelerated the excavation process. The Americans also introduced a new lock system, which used a series of water-filled chambers to raise and lower the ships, thus overcoming the problem of the canal's steep gradient. And so, after ten strenuous years, 
the canal was finally completed in 1914. The final cost was a staggering $375 million, making it the most expensive construction project in U.S. history at the time. But the result was a 48-mile waterway that connected the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, forever changing the face of global trade. The Panama Canal was not just an engineering marvel, it was a testament to human resilience and ingenuity. The Americans took over a project that many believed was doomed to fail. Yet, through their efforts, they turned the tide, overcoming insurmountable odds to create a pathway between the seas. With American grit and determination, the canal was finally completed, forever changing global trade routes. What has happened to the Panama Canal since its completion over a century ago, you may wonder? Well, the Panama Canal has seen quite a few changes since it first opened its locks to ships in 1914. One of the most significant changes took place at the end of the 20th century when the United States transferred control of the canal to Panama. This monumental event occurred on December 31, 1999, marking a new era for the canal and the country. In the years that followed, Panama took on the responsibility of maintaining and operating the canal, a task that was both challenging and rewarding. But the Panamanian administration didn't stop there. Recognizing the need to accommodate larger ships, the Panamax vessels, they embarked on an ambitious expansion project. This massive undertaking, which began in 2007 and was completed in 2016, involved the construction of a new set of locks that are wider, longer, and deeper than the original ones. This expansion allows the canal to accommodate new Panamax ships, which are roughly one and a half times the previous Panamax size and can carry over twice as much cargo. The modern canal, with its expanded capacity, continues to be a crucial conduit for global trade, facilitating the movement of goods between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Each year, more than 14,000 vessels pass through the canal, carrying over 200 million tons of cargo. That's everything from electronics and automobiles to grain and clothing. This impressive flow of goods underscores the canal's importance to global commerce. As a major maritime shortcut, it significantly reduces the time and cost of shipping goods around the world, contributing to the efficiency of global supply chains. In the ever-evolving world of global trade, the Panama Canal remains a vital and dynamic part of the international shipping industry. Its continued operation and expansion reflect both the enduring legacy of its past and the promise of its future. Even today, the Panama Canal continues to play a vital role in global commerce, standing as a testament to human ingenuity. But, what are some of the lesser-known curiosities about the Panama Canal? Let's delve into the top 10 curiosities we've discussed throughout this video. First off, did you know that ships essentially travel uphill to get through the canal? A series of locks act like watery elevators, lifting vessels up 85 feet to the main canal level before lowering them back down on the other side. Quite an ingenious solution to the geographical challenges, wouldn't you agree? Our second curiosity is the sheer volume of material excavated during the canal's construction. The Panama Canal is a colossal ditch over 50 miles long, and during its construction, enough earth was removed to circle the globe four times. That's a whole lot of dirt and rock. Curiosity number three is the surprising variety of wildlife found in the canal area. From capybaras, the world's largest rodents, to jaguars, the majestic predators of the Americas, the canal is a haven for biodiversity. Moving on to our fourth curiosity, the canal's busiest day. On February 2, 2016, a record-breaking 64 ships passed through the canal. That's nearly three times the daily average. The fifth curiosity is the canal's impact on global trade. It's estimated that the canal services about 5% of the world's total trade volume. It's a vital artery in the body of global commerce. Our sixth curiosity is the canal's direction. Contrary to popular belief, it doesn't run east-west, but rather due to Panama's S-shaped geography, the canal actually runs from southeast to northwest. For our seventh curiosity, we look at the canal's expansion. In 2016, a third set of locks was added to accommodate the new generation of megaships, known as New Panamax. The eighth curiosity is the price of passage. The most expensive toll ever paid was over $400,000. Ninth, the canal is a significant source of revenue for Panama. It contributes around $2 billion to the country's economy annually. And finally, our tenth curiosity, the canal's neutrality. It's open to all nations, promoting peace and cooperation in international trade. So there you have it, 
a journey through the history, engineering, and curious facts about one of the world's most significant maritime marvels, the Panama Canal.